This is Texans TV. It's your favorite 22 minutes of the week. It's Texans 360, and we're so very happy that you're watching it with us. My name is Drew Doherty. I'm your host, and we got a fun show coming at you from the Houston Methodist Training Center. Inside, the players working out, getting set for the year to come. And out here, we're getting set for another fun show. We got James Lifford, who's in charge of college scouting, and we're going to hear from him in just a little bit. Plus, we got to look back at Laramie Tunsil's time in Las Vegas because, hey, the left tackle just recently signed a deal to stay here with the Texans. Plus, we've added a few free agents, so we got to say hello to them. Got some selfie videos from them. But we begin by looking back at some of the fun kickball-wise with Damian Pierce, Thomas Booker, and the Houston Texans at the Texans Teen Club last week. We played kickball with the kids today. Unfortunately, Team Red, my team, did not come out with the dub. But it was a great time with the kids. We were out here for about an hour uh, kicking the ball around. So it was a good time to kind of relate to them, talk to them, hang out. Oh, it's good to get back and just do something that's just fun, you know? You forget about all the rest of the stuff. And you just get to talk to the kids, hang out with them, and just kind of remember what it was like to be in their shoes. <laughs> you know it's Team Red. We're not going with the blue. So far, they got one run, but we're going to put a stop to that. Defense is going to come clutch. You're looking at the winning team. The winning team blue. Look at that girl, look at that girl. No, no, go, go, go. Come on, come on, man, come on. Come on, man, come on, man, we're good, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. Good to be able to put your hands out like this. Bring it in. Put your hands out, bring it in. That's all we gotta do, that's all we gotta do. Oh, oh, oh. I love it, I love it, I love it. Six one, that's what we do, baby. That's what we do on the blue team, you feel me? That's game. Hey, blue squad, blue squad, you feel me? That's how we do right here. That's how you win. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. And that's game. Ah! Hey, you gotta get your hands up like this. Get your True story, in 1987 at Pine Shadows Elementary, I batted 1,000 in kickball. There's no way you can check that. All right, we can check on Damian Pierce and Thomas Booker, those two guys getting ready for their first professional offseason. They're in the thick of it, really, because this time last year, they were getting ready for the draft. It's a big, big change. Look who it is, Thomas Booker, defensive lineman here 
at the Houston Texans Teen Club, having a good time. If you're starting an, uh, a Houston Texans kickball team, who else you got on it with you? So I'm going with uh, I'm going with DP. You know, I feel like running back translates very, very well to running the bases and getting steals. And then you got to have some heavy hitters. So I'm going to go for, like, you know, Kenyon Green. Austin Deculus is probably another dude, because you got to have the guys that are going to hit the home runs. Some of the designated hitters, like the big poppies and all that. So, yeah, those are the three guys I could think of off the top of my head. You got to have speed and power to, to win kickball. What's this offseason been like for you? Because it's, I got, I'm guessing, 180 degrees different than what you were doing this mm -hmm. time last year. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, last year, this time I was getting ready, you know, to get drafted somewhere and um, in a completely different mindset, you know, not really sure what the future holds. But uh, now, around this time of year, this year, we got pieces that we're building around, pieces that we're putting in. So uh, I love the energy that's around. So I just got to make sure that I'm in position to uh, you know, do whatever Coach Miko asks, you know, whatever Coach DB asks. Just being locked in with uh, with Mike Eubanks and the rest of the strength and conditioning staff, um, being here throughout the off season is fantastic. Um, just going, kind of establishing the routines that are going to make you successful in the season. I'm pretty sure the DB wants to see improvement from last year in all aspects of my game. I'm gonna try to challenge myself to do just that. You know, uh, DB has high expectations for me and high standards for me that I try to carry over to myself. I'm just ready to work with Coach and see what he got for me this year, man. You know, everybody's working. You know, Jalen Petrie, Kenyon Green, Austin Deculus, Kurt Heinish, uh, Roy, Malik, all those guys, you know, are busting their ass uh, right now, trying to make it better things for uh, the next season. So it's good to be with familiar faces in a familiar place and just putting the work in. What are some goals you don't mind sharing about what you want to do in 2023? I think for me, it's just to improve my pass rush and my run defense, just become a better overall player. I think I had flashes last year, but they were too inconsistent. So I want to make sure that I can become more of a consistent good player versus a guy who just flashes every once in a while. You know, that's what separates good from great in this league, if you can do it consistently. Yeah, man, I'm just trying to take it in to be the best I can be. Cause I know the better I am, the better everybody around me is going to be. And, you know, vice versa. You know, they get, if I see them getting better, I'm going to want to get better. They see me getting better, they're going to want to get better. So just try to have that good infectious energy in the locker room and around the building. And, um, you know, we just trying to play some ball, man, bring something back to Houston. You're a younger guy, you're not from this area, but I'm an old man. I am here. I, I was around D'Amico Ryans. I'm guessing you sense the excitement that Ryan's coming to the Texans is brought, haven't you? Absolutely. I mean, you can feel it. It's palpable in the building. As soon as you walk in, you know, everybody's kind of buzzing right now. You know, there's a lot of hope. There's a lot of stuff going on. But at the same time, everybody understands that it's all talk until you put it on a, on tape and on the field. So I'm excited for it. Um, and I think everybody in the building is just, you know, getting ready to go, ready to play football. Just hearing from Coach Miko and hearing from his staff and hearing from um, previous places he's worked, everybody loves him. Great character guy, high character guy. And uh, I'm excited to learn up on him and um, you know, to be up on his wing. All right, what's next for you this offseason? <sighs> just keep working, you know, being in the weight room, trying to get faster, stronger, leaner, um, and all that so I can produce. I just want to be, I, I wanted to be a difference this year on the field when you see me play, you know, in terms of my development, and my maturity on the field. And um, I just want to be a better ball player than I was last year. You know, I just want to keep improving and, um, you know, keep climbing. All right, we'll get the ladder, we'll get the rope, whatever you need to help climb. And uh, it's been, been fun talking with you, Damian. Yes, sir, thank you. Thanks for having me. What's up, Houston? It's Robert Woods. I'm excited to be a Texan. Can't wait to spend Sundays with you guys. Let's go. Let's get to work. Houston, Texas, what's going on? It's Andrew Beck. Just want to let you guys know we're so excited to be joining such a great organization. My wife and I are even more excited to be moving back to the great city of Houston, Texas. Can't wait to get this thing rocking with you guys. We're going to surprise some people and win some games this year. I'm really excited about it. Can't wait to see y'all on Sunday. East Town, it's Mike Boone. I'm super excited to be in the great city and become a part of an awesome organization. I'm looking forward to you guys lighting the stance up with us on Sundays. Let's go. What's up, Texas fans? It's your boy, Tavier Thomas. Just want to let you guys know I'm happy to be back. Happy to be back with all my teammates and all the new coaches. Let's get this thing rolling. Go, Texas. What's up, H-Town? This is your boy, Chase Winovich, defensive end number 50. Super fired up about this opportunity. I can't wait to get to work. Let's do this. H-Town, what's going on? This is wide receiver Noah Brown. Couldn't be more excited to be part of the program. Most importantly, ready to go down there and get to work, win some games at NRG. I'll see y'all there. That's how, that's how you do it, right? All right. Houston, Texas, man, what's up? Very excited to be a new member of the team, man. I'm ready to work, and I'm clocking in today, man. Let's go. We're back, and it's so awesome to meet those new Houston Texans, and I'll give them a good thumbs up on the production value of those videos. But I'm going to give two thumbs up on the production value of this Jimmy Ward mic'd up video. He spent a lot of time in San Francisco with the 49ers. He's now a Houston Texan, gonna be an important part of this defense. And here he was, wired for sound. 
Hey, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Hey, bro. It's all about paying attention to the details and the fundamentals, bro. See us, bro. It's all about us, bro. Hey, us on two, us on point two. Uh -huh. Ah, that's what we've been waiting on. This is what we've been waiting on, brother. Your time, baby. Yes, sir. One at a time, cut that thing loose. Yes, sir. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's go do it. Yes, sir. How you doing, man? Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you got it, man. You got it. That's our time. That's our time. That's me. Oh, that's me. Hey, push it. Press it. Press it. Start fast and strong. I got you good. Good tackle, Jack. Pick. Trick play right here? Nah. I'll die. Run. Second and nine, y'all. Good, commu good, good, good communication, good communication, bro. Good communication. Good hit, Brett. <laughs> he got to keep, keep that same energy, second half. It's a long game, man. All the ball, the ball. Whatever happened is over. Well, how we, what we looking like right now? Everything that happened is over. Now how we finish? That's, that's all that matters. How we finish? How we going to finish this thing? All right? Let's go. Good tackle. Good tackle, Mo. Yeah! Yeah! Hey, I jumped up there. Hey, hit the ball! Hit the ball out! Hit the ball out! Yeah! 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 Go and get your pick six, Tim. Hey, man, on hey, to man. the next, man. The hey, next man. One. Playoff pick, man. Pick, man, pick, man. Yeah, that's me. Hey, man, on to the next, man. Y'all already know what time it is, man. We need the faithful to come out and support, man, just like y'all did today. We're going to turn it up. Let's go. We are one month away from the start of the 2023 NFL Draft. Can you feel it? I sure can. And James Lipford definitely feels it. He's the director of college scouting for the Houston Texans, and he recently caught up with Mark Vandermeer and John Harris. James Lippert joining us, Assistant Director of Player Personnel, College Scouting Director. James, can you take us through maybe a typical weekend in the fall? You have guys out there scouting college games. I know a big part of the department is evaluating other professional football games, seeing who the next opponents are, that kind of thing. But it's got to be hard to deploy all of that. How do you go about doing that? What can you tell us about it? Well, I mean, I would say the pro department and the college department running on, you know, call it parallel tracks. I mean, Ronnie, DJ, Todd, those guys, they're, they are wholly focused on who's our next two to three opponents. Let's advance them. Let's, we're going to see them play live. I, I generally use my fall more of on the college side um, just because that's kind of what I've come up in. That's what I'm more, you know, probably more comfortable in. So our guys are, I wouldn't say we're every single scout of mine is going to be at a game every single weekend. I think we try to be a little more judicious with, to me, practice exposures are just as important as a game exposure. So if a guy like, hey, I need to be home this weekend, no problem. We've never been a team that's like, hey, all seven road guys are at a game every Saturday. I, I think that's a lot. But, I mean, a typical weekend, if you are at a game, I mean, you're getting there three hours early. 
and you don't go there to you don't go there wide open hey we'll just see what happens we'll see who i see i personally like okay if i can only get these five bullet points on my piece of paper here done i want to see this guy that guy that guy i want to talk to this coach and i want to watch you know this left tackle every third down i'm watching this left tackle i'm watching this center mm -hmm. i'm watching this pass rusher so i go with a very you know very much like call it plan of attack for a game i don't just go up there and eat popcorn and watch the game i mean it's like pregame is more important than the game in my opinion i like to, i mean i'm probably a nuisance i like like to hug hug up right behind the players i like to dang near hear what they're saying to their teammates i think you can really gather a lot i mean i was at the uh I was at what was it Kentucky Georgia late in the season looking at players from both sides and you know like Georgia you know one of the Georgia had a player that was banged up and even even being around him or you know a guy maybe a guy for next year's draft that you're looking at you just you whatever it is you're going with a plan of attack and I'm here to see this when I walk out of that stadium I want to have all th these things ticked off so that's that's how I approach a weekend man. James, you've been evaluating players for a while, and we've just had all these free agent signings. It's still in progress. It's always in progress. But how much of the data that you accumulate from when they're college players applies to when they might become available as free agents? How does that come into play? I would say to your, to your question, how much of the data applies? A small amount. I, I think you really have to, you know, when you're looking at free agents, you have the obvious benefit that you don't have a college players if you have video of them playing nfl football against nfl players so that's really that's what you you go off that but i'd say if we're going to look into bringing a player from another club into our organization we've got to do some background work just like you do for a college player you know do you have some friends on staff with you know pick a team you know the vikings or whatever do you have some friends on staff you know the new them how were they these last few years? And then, then to your question about the college information, let's go back to what we have. We have an awesome database, just like every team. Everything's there, everything's graded. Here were our concerns on the guy coming out as a prospect. Granted, he was 21 years old when he came out. Now he's a 25 year old married guy with a, with two children. Like he's, he's a different human. So guys get older, guys get more mature, but a lot of times guys don't maybe change their spots too much. So. You, you do defer back to that college information a little bit, but I would say probably not as much as you think. How difficult is it for you and the staff to kind of sift through the BS and the real? How tough is that to get through um, as you interview a prospect? I'd say the level of difficulty varies with the players. And, and I would say what we've tried to do a lot better job in the last couple of years, and look, any scout will tell you, we are not trained inter you know, interviewers, whatever term you want to use. Like we – evaluate ball players that's kind of job description number one yep. so i think there is an art and it's something that you can work on and get better because when guys give you the canned answer or the generic answer or maybe they're not a super comfortable public speaker it's it's a lot of times you walk in a room and there's a dozen people there you're like this is i'm 20 years old i've never done this before this is not the most comfortable environment since he got here in 2019, Laramie Tunsil has been outstanding at protecting the blind side of the Houston Texans quarterbacks. He went to his third Pro Bowl this offseason, and we put a microphone on him. If you could be any animal, what would you be? Ant eater, so random. Is a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> No, yes. <laughs> Does a straw have one hole or two, two holes? All right, two. I already know that one. My experience today was it was solid. It was a solid experience. Um, I got to do the water water ball toss challenge. Players from each conference break into pairs and toss a water balloon back My and forth. Oh, oh, Aaron. Aaron. Oh, man. And I overthrew the water balloon, so. That's tough. I lost it. <laughs> I wasn't even trying to launch it at all. I damn sure did. Yeah, it's super solid. So, but the AFC is up in points, so that sounds good. Closer to that chicken, we can get. You want to play dodgeball? Time now for our first game of epic Pro Bowl dodgeball. Oh! <laughs> yeah. <What? laughs> I'm with that. I'm with that. All best boys. Man, you got that bag too, man. Appreciate you, bro. Howdy, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah.
Hey, D. Doc, what's up, Elton? What's up, buddy? Mm -hmm. What's up? What you got? Now what you doing? That little uh, mood change. Fuck it all, bro, for real. How you need me? <laughs> I know, it's always good to see the players, man. All these great players, of course, but it's always good to see Dan Henrik because we've been going at it since high school. You know, I always used to come see him play in high school. He'll come see me play in high school, so it's always good to see him doing well. How they approach. There's some strategy involved here, too, Marcus. I got nervous when I heard 5,000 pounds. What? But I thought about the big fellas and remove exactly what they're doing right now. Get this weight off as fast as you can. Look at Frank Rag now. The AFC actually looks like they have a tremendous strategy. What is the energy They're just sliding them off. I, I don't know. Did they start late? They're trying to pull. <laughs> the Buddy. AFC's got everybody taking the weight Jeffrey off so they Simmons can get it done. I got this. Got to try to I move mean, this. All five first down markers must be placed in receptacles to win. So here they go for I mean, look how smart this is. Pounds. AFC. Oh. Look how smart oh, this is. Look at the NFC over there. Look, Look they just gave up. Still heavy? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. We appreciate you watching, and this show would not have happened were it not for Tyler Sudarth and Guardy Swingby putting it all together. Plus, we got to thank some of our loyal viewers, like my Aunt Ro, my Uncle Bub, and Carl Mandel. Thanks, CM. Until then, we'll see you next time. Go Texans. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.